G'day guys, in today's episode of Ask Steve, we've come down to the park to talk about whether or not you should take your dog on your big lap around Australia. Alright guys, today's question comes from Cheryl Wright, who wants to know whether or not they should take their dog Opie on their big lap around Australia, but I'll read it out to you anyway. Hey Steve, we're planning our big lap with our two kids, 10 and 8. We plan to leave this June and July and are loving your Insight Videos Ask Steve series. Thanks Cheryl, much appreciated. We've been agonising over our decision whether to take our family dog on the big lap. We know there are plenty of pros and cons, mostly cons, but we're really struggling with leaving him behind. We've heard lots of different advice and stories of travellers who help each other out. Our major concern is missing out on all the national parks. Having done a lot of travelling, what's your honest opinion? Are we really going to limit ourselves by listening to our heart and not our heads? Well, Cheryl, it's definitely a tough question and I understand exactly where you're coming from. You know, we didn't have a dog when we did our big lap, so it wasn't a decision we had to make, but we've got one now, Buddy, our Dalmatian, and uh, if we were gonna go and do the big lap tomorrow, it would be a tough call as to whether we would leave him behind or whether we take him with us and just work through the problems that come with that. So really in this video, I'm gonna get down to the nitty gritty of what some of those problems are that you will face if you do choose to take Opie with you. Uh, uh, some of the potential solutions that you might find to, to work through those problems and at the end of this video I'll talk about whether or not I think we would take Buddy with us if we were going to go and do the big lap tomorrow. And one of the biggest issues you're going to have is uh, taking them to national parks because you can't take them in there. Uh, dogs are banned from national parks in Australia and national parks really encompass a lot of the places you want to go on your big lap. You know, Kakadu and Karajini and Litchfield and all these awesome national parks that you'll definitely want to visit on your trip you can't take your dog. Yeah, and even just simple day-to-day -day things like uh, going shopping in a shopping centre or uh, going to the pub for lunch. Um, you know, once again, you can't leave your dog in the car park. Maybe you could, if it's a, not a hot day and it, you can find a shady spot, you might be able to leave him for an hour or two. But even then, that's, you know, it's just risky. So it's a dilemma. Um, you take your dog with you and it's, there's a lot of benefits to it but it's definitely going to restrict your trip. You also need to consider the safety of your dog. Uh, a lot of places in Australia they use 1080 baits which are like a poison that they use to, to kill wild dogs and dingoes and if your dog comes across one of those baits he's going to eat it as well and uh, that you know it's pretty much going to be the end of your dog. Another issue is traveling long distances with dogs. Uh, some dogs really get car sick uh, on long drives in the car. Uh, that could be an issue. Even if your dog doesn't get car sick, they generally get pretty restless for long drives in the car and they'll want to you know, jump around and they tend to fill up whatever space is available to them and you might find that you know, it's all right if you're just going you know, for a trip down to the park, but if you're going to spend eight or 10 hours in the car in a day, you know, is that really going to work with the, with the particular dog that you've got? Even caravan parks that do allow dogs, uh, that you, you know, it's important that your dog is quiet and doesn't bark all night. Is your dog one of those dogs that's going to bark all night, uh, going to keep everybody else awake and annoy all your neighbours? Uh, are they the sort of dog that's going to you know, growl and, and potentially bite people that walk past your camp? Uh, you know, so there's just a lot of these things to think about. And, and of course it comes down to the individual dog. If your dog's super friendly and, and, and sleeps all night and doesn't get bothered by sounds and possums in trees and other dogs nearby, well then these aren't really issues. But they're just cert certainly things you've got to consider because it's not like being at home uh, where your dog's in their own familiar space and they're pretty, pretty chill at night. Um, if, if you're going to be somewhere different virtually every night, then how's your dog going to deal with that? It'd be certainly be a good idea, uh, if you're not certain about that, to test that first, to, to go to places and do some shorter trips, maybe a weekend here or there, and just find out, you know, how's your dog going to actually cope with uh, being in strange places every day? If those things don't put you off and you still think, no, we're going to take our dog, he's part of the family and we're going to make it work, then let's have a look at some ways of actually making it work for you. One way you can take your dog and still get out to see national parks is to use one of the online pet sitting services like Mad Paws or Paw Shake or Pet Cloud. These guys give you a range of pet sitters to choose from in different towns all over the country and you can basically go online, find one that's nearby, in a town nearby to the national park you want to go to, uh, book the sitter, drop your dog off, leave them there for two days, three days, five days, however long you plan to go out to the national park go and have your national park adventure and come back and pick up your dog. So that's a good solution. It's not going to be easy. You're going to be logistically having to deal with that. You're going to have to pay for it as you go. But it is a potential solution. If you're going to take your dog and you want to see national parks, that is certainly a potential solution. So for example, if you're in Darwin and you want to go and spend five days out at Kakadu, 
then you jump on one of these services, you find yourself a pet sitter in Darwin, you leave your dog with them, you head out to Kakadu, you have your adventure in Kakadu, you come back, you pick up your dog and you keep going. Now that's quite a viable option and these services really cover a big part of the country these days and, and they're getting better and better and better as more and more pet sitters jump on board. Another option is you might meet people in a caravan park who have a dog and, and will be happy to look after your dog while you duck out to a national park for a few days. I wouldn't count on that, but it's something you might be able to, it's just an opportunity thing. You might just meet people and you know get chatting and say, hey, you would, would you mind looking after Opie for us while we head out to Litchfield National Park for a couple of days? Um, you know, you never know. I don't think you'll really struggle to find places to stay. There's plenty of places, certainly plenty of free camps, state forests, uh, and a lot of caravan parks that will allow you to take a dog. Just use the Wikicamps app and uh, even Big Fours, which uh, you know traditionally didn't allow dogs at all as a matter of policy. In the last recent years, have been loosening that policy, and more and more of them are now allowing dogs as long as you you know keep them contained, of course. A great book that I can recommend is Bush Camping with Dogs. Now we picked up a copy of this when we got Buddy a few years ago, and it's certainly been helpful in helping us to find good bush camps and caravan parks that accept dogs. And there's heaps and heaps of info in there about travelling with dogs and just making the whole experience a lot easier for you. Make sure your dog's vaccinations are all up to date and take copies of the certificates from the vet that, that prove that they are up to date because some places you go you might actually need them or if you have to go and see a different vet they might want to see copies of those. Uh, get the copy of your vet's history, your dog's history from your vet and take that with you as well so if you do have to go and see a vet along the way you can say look here's the whole story of, of our dog, any issues he's had in the past and uh, you're not going to be sort of chasing back to your vet back at home trying to sort of chase up information that you could easily take with you. Obviously make sure your dog is microchipped and it's got a collar on that's got uh, a tag that's got your your phone number on it so that if he does wander off he, you know the rope comes undone and you know somebody else finds him they can easily give you a call or worst case scenario they can take him to a vet they can scan the microchip and they've got your contact details it's also worth making sure that those contact details on the microchip are up to date because if you've moved house since you bought your dog uh, your address might not be up to date if your mobile number's changed just make sure that info is all up to date if you really don't know how your dog's going to go on long road trips in the car then test it before you go Trains, 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 trains. Try and find a quiet spot to uh, talk to the camera, but uh, I'm either dealing with other people or trains. At least there's a gap between the trains. Okay, uh, now what I was going to say is if you're not sure how your dog's going to go on long road trips, then test the water. You know, go away for, for a weekend or go away for a week before you're actually going to do your big lap and before you've made the decision or not whether to take the dog and test them you know just see how they go and uh, you know if it's if it's hard on a weekend it's probably not going to get much easier on a big lap so you know don't make a big decision before you really know how it's going to pan out So with all that in mind, uh, would we take Buddy with us if we were going to go and do the big lap again? And uh, I have to say, to be quite honest, no, we wouldn't. Uh, it would be hard. It would be hard to leave him. Um, you know, he's a big part of the family, and you know, we, we love him to bits. But I just know there's just so many times uh, where having a dog with us would would make it difficult. And uh, as much as yes, there's certainly options. You can find pet sitters and. Uh, you can find you know pet friendly places to stay there's just so many times along the way where having a dog would would be a, a, a difficult thing you know i did a trip up to lake argyle um, for a month just me and buddy in the car and that was okay you know we i i, I enjoyed having him there and i'm glad i took him um, but the reality was just a simple thing like going into the supermarket for half an hour was hard work this is one of the uh, challenges of traveling with a dog is what to do with them when you need to go to shops and things like that. Because it's just me, I can't leave him with someone else. Um, I found a little bit of a shady spot, but it's not, not that great. Now I was by myself, so that made it a little bit more difficult. Uh, if you're a family, then you know somebody can stay in the car, someone can go in the supermarket. But just think about the, the reality of that day, day in, day out. You know, There's just so many times that you're gonna wanna go and do stuff as a family that you can't take your dog with you. And uh, the, the reality is you'll end up missing out on things. You'll end up saying, look, we just have no other solution. We can't take him with us. We can't leave him here, so we can't go. And um, doing the big lap is such a unique, one-off, you know, once-in-a-lifetime kind of experience, especially with your young kids. 
Um, to me, that's more important than the pain of leaving the dog behind. Now, I'm definitely not saying don't take your dog. What I'm saying is really consider it. Uh, it's, it's not going to be the same experience. It'll be better in some ways. It'll be worse in others. And you really need to prioritize. Now, if you're a you know, grey nomads and you've got your little dog and you, you know, you're not fussed about hiking through national parks and, and you know, going having long lunches at pubs and, and tours and things like that, if you're basically going to live in your van and you're just mooching around the countryside, well, you know, having a dog might be you know, easy and uh, definitely a, a, a not even a decision to make. But if you're a young family and you, you plan on doing some pretty big adventures and uh, getting to remote places, there's, there's no doubt that it's going to be a, a, a distraction. It's going to be a, a stumbling block. Well, there you go, Cheryl. That's my answer. Um, if you want to take him, by all means do, and there are plenty of ways of, of making it work. But just keep in mind that you are going to be compromising. Um, there, there's no way of avoiding that. There's going to be things you're going to miss out along the way. Um, there's going to be challenges you're going to have to face. And, you know, for my money, I would rather have the best possible big lap experience I can, do everything we want to do along the way um, without the constantly, oh, we can't do this because we've got the dog, we can't do that because we've got the dog. Now, I'm saying this quietly because Buddy's back there and I don't want him to hear me, but, you know, we would find a dog sitter who could look after him for a year and, um, you know, give him back when we finished our trip, of course, and uh, we would just make it work that way. All right guys, thanks for joining me despite the trains going past. Uh, I finally got this video out, it's taken a few takes. Uh, if you've got a question for me, email it to asksteve at thebiglap.tv. Grab yourself a copy of Bush Camping with Dogs if you do plan to take your dog with you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Boy. Boy, sis. Boy.